and welcome to A Fistful of Dice. This is going to be the uh, second episode, well technically third, but episode two of Campaign Crafting, uh, which is a video series in which we are building a world and building a campaign together. Um, if you have missed out on previous episodes, there's a link down below to the playlist where you can watch uh, the first two episodes, which were the introduction, and then in the uh, in the second episode we talked about um, the pillars, the general ideas that you're going to come at your campaign with and that you're going to use to kind of drape everything over. So today we're going to talk about setting the mood. And what I mean by this is figuring out what kind of tone, what kind of feel that your, that your campaign and that your world is going to have. You know, there's lots of different ways to, to run a game, and there's lots of different moods that you can have at the table. Um, you know, an example is the level of magic, whether it's high magic um, or low magic. Uh, examples of a low magic world would be like uh, Westeros from Game of Thrones, where um, magic is um, something that most people don't believe in. Um, the gods are very distant and uh, may not even exist. Um, and the only real magic that we see um, is thought of as witchcraft, sort of ancient evil type stuff. Uh, high magic would be something like, um, well, like, uh, like Lord of the Rings, where you're seeing fantastical creatures, um, you're seeing wizards, you're seeing magic, um, and everyone sort of genuinely believes in magic and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, existence of magical creatures and things like that, or like Harry Potter is high magic, obviously. Um, other examples are like the themes, so the, just got rubbed off somehow, themes, there we go. Themes, so like uh, what sort of um, thematic elements are going to be present in your campaign, whether it be, you know, war or revenge or, um, you know, political intrigue, stuff like that. And then there's the mood where it's, you know, if it's dark, if it's kind of light and funny, if it's kind of uh, swashbuckling, adventure -y, um, or if it's more sort of somber and apocalyptic in tone, things like this. And then guidance level, which is uh, sandbox versus railroad. So these are the kind of like uh, the metagame elements of your campaign, um, the things that sort of uh, at a high level affect how the game proceeds and how it is played. Um, and obviously uh, your GM style is going to affect this you know, more than anything else. But it's also a matter of talking to your players. Um, what I would suggest is before you start getting too deep into a campaign, um, the players that you know are going to be involved in it, uh, kind of prod them a little bit with some questions that you might have about the, uh, the these things. What do you want to see from a campaign, you can ask them. Uh, you know, do you want lots of magic items, or would you prefer magic be a little bit less common? Would you like to see a world where magic is sort of unseen? Um, you know, how how active do you want deities to be in this world? Are they walking around? Are they, you know, talking with people? Or are they loftier? Are they sort of so distant that many don't even believe they exist? Um, other things you can ask are, you know, what sort of rating are you looking for here? Are you okay with PG-13, R, you know, this kind of thing? What level of violence are you wanting, you know? is Are things like murder, rape, incest, you know, things like that, are they permissible at the table in this campaign? Really getting a feel for what your players want to do. And even asking, you know, are you wanting a lot of dungeon delving? Are you, are you, do you like puzzles? Do you like riddles? Do you want to get involved in political entry? That kind of stuff. So that's kind of what all this stuff sort of plays into. And again, this is just sort of some examples of aspects that come into play when you're, when you're kind of trying to set the mood for your campaign. So let's take a look at the campaign I'm building, which I've named Legends of the Verge. And we're going to look at these four elements. Uh, in terms of the campaign that I'm building. Now, in the last video, I kind of explained the pillars of my campaign, which involved a, uh, the crucible, a large magical object, the kiln, a, uh, a prison, 
in a volcano, a orc army that sort of resembles the Mongol army, um, and uh, what was the other thing? Oh, the, the, the idea of a shard world, which is a world that is not flat, not spherical, but an actual shard of, an, of a greater planet that is broken off on its own. So those pillars might come into play here. So magic level. In my campaign, um, I'm going to go with the magic level that I'm most comfortable with, which is middle or moderate magic. Where magic is common enough where most, if not all, people believe it exists. Um, but it's uncommon enough where a common person can live and die without ever seeing a magical object or a magical person. Um, you know, you're not going to go down to the town wizard and have him cast spells on you. That's, that's not how it works in my campaign. Magic is pretty uncommon. Um, where magical items are incredibly sought after. But, you know, the common people are aware that magic exists. And in fact, uh, I think the various armies of this world have um, magic users in their ranks, serving them, serving the government, serving the army. Um, you know, however that, how that plays out when I come to my planning on my factions and cultures. So middle moderate magic, so we're going to say that, um, you know, magic users and items are uncommon, but the uh, belief slash awareness of magic is fairly common. So think of it like this. Middle magic, think of it like this. Maybe you guys can't read that. I don't even know. I have terrible handwriting, but <laughs> um, think of it like this, okay? Um, think of magic like wealth. You are aware that wealthy people, that celebrities exist, but most people go their whole lives without seeing someone um, who's incredibly wealthy or famous. But, you know, there might come a day where you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you recognize, hey, that's Sean Penn. This happened to me. This is a true story. Um, and you recognize that it's Sean Penn. And you walk up to him and you're like, you're Sean Penn. And Sean Penn says, yep. And then walks away because he doesn't care who you are because he's a magic user slash Sean Penn. So think of it like that. Magic is so... Uh, widely known, but also uncommon that if a peasant in this world, if a common person, just your normal average everyday Joe, you know, working class guy, were to see a spell being cast, he would be like, holy shit, that's magic. Wow, I, like, I've heard of this, but I've never actually seen it. You know, that, that sort of thing. Um, and this also plays into, like, how clerics would work, where if you're a cleric, you're not necessarily a divine magic user. Um, the way I'm thinking about how clerics will work in my world is that most clerics, like 80 to 90 percent, will have no magical ability whatsoever. So if the players choose to be clerics, they will be fairly uncommon and unique in this world because they will be able to cast divine magic. So think of it that way. Now we're going to move on to themes. Now themes are incredibly abstract and really theme and mood they really kind of go together and mesh a little bit but when I okay so let's take an example here something really easy let's take um, Star Wars and let's look at the themes of Star Wars the themes of Star Wars are self-discovery it's a journey it is uncovering secrets it's a rescue um, it's making friends, going out of your comfort zone. It's um, leaving your old life behind. These are the themes of, of Star Wars. So the themes in my campaign, um, 
I'm going to look at the pillars here that I that I had last week. So the pillars were the crucible, which is the source of, of magic, the kiln, which was the prison, the half orc army, and the fact that it's a shard world. So the themes are going to be, um, let's see. So it's a shard world. So I'm going to say one of the themes is going to be dying earth. So that's the idea that maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday in the near future, there's going to be a threat that is going to perhaps bring about um, the end or even you know the, the beginning of the end of this world. It's something that poses a, th a threat to everybody on this planet or this shard world. And maybe it's something natural. Maybe it has to do with the crucible sort of you know, it's magic sort of negatively uh, uh, affecting this place. But I want Dying Earth to be a theme. Another theme I want is Invasion. And this is going to deal with the Orc army that I've been talking about. I also want Discovery. And Adventure. And these really, these should be themes in pretty much any campaign you're running, but I want the PCs to be able to, to discover secrets about this otherwise mysterious world that no one really quite understands, and also discovering things about the Crucible, um, why it is the source of all magic, and what exactly it does um, on this shard world. Um, they're going to be able to learn about the Orc Army. How is it formed? How do they have firearms? How are they so organized? How are they? How, who united them? And then adventure, obviously, going out, questing, you know, having having adventures. Um, primarily, I want this campaign to be uh, not lighthearted, but, but fun. Okay, so for the themes, I have Dying Earth, Invasion, Discovery, Adventure. And this is just kind of the, I mean, like I said, the very abstract, very high-level notions of the campaign. And this is going to kind of help remind you and help craft uh, a, a general arc across the multiple sessions where you're thinking, okay, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I want to come to this dying earth thing. I want that to kind of be a, a theme throughout, um, you know, and I want this sort of theme of invasion discovery as well. And that kind of gives you opportunities to do like foreshadowing and stuff like that, where, you know, things may come up that the players think are sort of, you know, inconsequential, but then later on they realize we're sort of important into the overall plot. So that's kind of a cool, unique opportunity as well. Okay, now we're going to talk about mood. Um, which, again, is very abstract, but um, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going for, like, a gothic or a dark sort of medieval fantasy. You know, I'm not, I'm not looking at, uh, like, a, like, a witcher-type setting. You know, that's very, like, gothic and dark. Or another example of, like, a really dark fantasy is, like, the Dragon Age series. I'm going for more of a, like, a, a sword and sorcery... Um, type uh, feel where the players are going to be interacting with lots of different colorful cultures um, and uh, visiting a lot of different locales and the idea that even though this continent is sort of you know one place it hasn't necessarily been mapped out totally and there's a lot of sort of discovery and, 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 and opportunities for that sort of thing where you know, and like an example is like the Conan books, you know, uh, Conan is a, uh, you know, lives on the continent of Hyperborea, and he's from Samaria in the north, and as he goes south, he gets into more alien and more foreign places that are sort of completely, he didn't even know existed, so that kind of thing. So sword and sorcery, um, sort of lighthearted. And when I say lighthearted, I mean, I don't mean, like, um, I don't mean it's going to be comedic or, 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 or campy. I just mean, even though there's going to be dark things going on, for the most part, it's going to be fun and adventurous and um, exciting. So I'm going to say lighthearted, and I'm going to say exotic. Okay? Now, guidance level. This is something where you really have to be 
you really have to kind of figure out very early on how you're going to do this because it's going to affect how you're going to build the campaign, how you're going to map it out. The idea of sandbox versus railroad. You know, sandbox where players can go anywhere, do anything, and railroad where they're on a completely set path and you're just guiding them from point A to point B to point C, so on and so forth. I think both have their pros and cons. Personally, I hate a full sandbox and I hate a full railroad. The sweet spot is right in the middle where the players have a sense of free will, freedom of choice, where they're able to kind of go, come and go as they please, pick up quests here, go talk to this person, you know. If they feel like doing something else, they can go do that. But there's a general arc that they're, you know, continually working towards and that you as a GM have in mind. So, um, you know, I kind of like to call this a, a, a loose arc, you know, where you have you have your story in mind, but you don't have it planned out. Session one, this happens. Session two, this happens. Session three, this happens. Rather, you have some scenes kind of in your head that you know are going to happen in some fashion, one way or the other. You know, your players are going to, um, you know, you might have a specific battle scene in mind or a specific dungeon that you have in mind or, you know, NPCs, things like this. They're going to be interacting with and experiencing. So the loose arc kind of has a beginning, a middle, and an end that is going to be affected by the players. The players can affect the arc and, you know, you're going to come into this campaign the way I'm laying it out with a beginning, a middle, and an end of the campaign. But through the course of the campaign, that middle might change. That end might change. By the time you get to the end of this campaign, the ending might be completely different from how you envisioned it. And you know what? It kind of should be. Because if the ending is different by the time you get there, that means the players really did affect the world. And you know that you were a malleable and, uh, you know, good GM for allowing them to do that, to affect the world and the campaign like that. So, like I said, guys, these are very, like, lofty kind of meta ways of thinking about the campaign. And really, it's just something you have to kind of get down and figure out. Uh, before you get too far into building the campaign, because if you come at it and you want to build something kind of dark and, and gritty like Dragon Age, for instance, and you, you know, you build this world and you've got this kind of dark, kind of somber, you know, macabre tone to it, and then you ask your players, you know, what are you guys wanting out of a campaign? And they say they want something kind of more like, uh, like Lord of the Rings. Then all of a sudden you're like, well, you know, crap, I kind of had this other campaign in mind or this other world in mind. So it's good to kind of get this stuff out of the way at the beginning and, um, you know, figure out how all this stuff is going to operate. And again, you have to be malleable. You have to know when to switch these things up and kind of switch gears if you need to. So anyway, guys, this video has run a little bit long. Sorry about that. But that's going to be it for me. Look forward to the next episode of Campaign Crafting, which we're going to be talking about factions. Take care. Happy game.